Hi, today we're just going over your Photoshop basics that you need to get started with for this assignment and for your future assignments. These are going to be two of the most used menus that you'll need um, for working in Photoshop and in similar apps if that's what you're using. But today we're just demonstrating Photoshop. You'll find that the more apps you download for free that are similar to Photoshop, just as a note, they're very similar and act in the same way. So by learning one, you're learning about the others too. But Photoshop is what we teach at Bridgewater because that's the industry um, standard. So first, this is an image that I just brought off of my desktop. I'm going to go get another because that's the process you're going to use when you bring your images from your digital camera or your phone into Photoshop. You're going to go up to the File menu at the top, the Text pull-down menu that you'll see at the top of the screen that I can't show here because I'm on a big screen. But I'm going to File, whoops, and open and that will take you to a sub menu where you can look for the images that you want to work with um, or take off your camera directly or from your photos folder so i'm going to look for a new one and open it and that comes up in my full photoshop workspace which we're going to talk a lot about in different you know both in our thursday sessions and I will record other sessions about your workspace and all the different aspects of it. This is just the basics today to get started with an image. So here I am. This is an image that just came off my digital camera. So the next thing I would do with any image that I bring into Photoshop, the intention of what you're going to do with the image, where you want it to go, whether it be a printer or social media, always determines the size of the output that you want to determine tell Photoshop um, is for this image and you'll find that up if you scroll over from the file menu one two three menus and your pull down menus at the top there's a menu called image drag down to the sub menu in there called image size and that's one of those Photoshop menus you're going to be using all the time because again that helps you control how your images look when you send them out to where you want them to go. It determines the quality. So I'm going to image size. And from my digital camera here, it's showing me what the size is um, from my camera. And it's giving me a preview of how that looks. And if I go up here to auto resolution, that's going to show me how it would look um, on the screen at a fully um, opened up resolution and I know that's a little confusing but when you start talking about image quality it'll become clearer um, right now you can see that the original image is 20 by 13 inches and this sub menu over here determines what type of output measurement you want in most cases you're going to be using inches so this is 20 by 13 inches, and that's really big for a output to social media. It would be nice for printing on um, a nice big piece of high quality printing paper, maybe for an inkjet printer. But I want to scale that down, and that's what you're going to do is try to get your images for this project to be as close as possible to 8 by 10 for printing on an 8.5 by 11 inch paper. And if a printer needed a border, then it would have it. So I'm going to scale the width down to 10. And you can see over here on the left, this is a Photoshop thing. There's kind of a bracket with like, it looks like a little lock or a chain on it. If you see that kind of symbol, it means that these two measurements are locked together. So whatever I do to one is going to affect the other. If I put this back up at say 12, it's changing the height in accordance with the width. And that's just to give you a proportional image that doesn't lose um, the look of the image or the proportions because you are changing these separately and making them very different from the original width and height. So that's a nice feature, but you can change that. So I'm leaving this at 11 
I mean 10 by 6.6 6, because that's the original proportion. And now if I click on that key or that little lock thing, it'll take the brackets off and I can change these to different proportions. So for instance, if I change the width to two, now the height stays 6.6 6 inches. And you can see that's like a really exaggerated perspective, which in some cases you may want for special effects, but I don't hear. So I'm just going to click back on the lock. And just by clicking on that lock symbol, it takes me right back to my original measurements, which is a nice feature. Again, a Photoshop, you don't have to write everything down and figure out what it was and panic about that. It just goes right back to the original. It, so I'm going to scale this back down to 10 by 6.6. 6. That's the original proportions. The resolution here is important because that's the density of the picture elements, pixels or picture elements that make up your image. And that's kind of like a grid. If you think of fabric weaving, if you have a tighter weave, you have more threads. If you have a higher resolution, you have a tighter weave. So that's going to give you a sharper image, a more professional looking image. So sometimes photographers, if they're going out to a very high quality printing press, they'll go with upwards of a thousand pixels per inch. Um, for an inkjet printer, if that's what I was saving this for, which is usually what a basic digital camera like mine will give you resolution for, 300 pixels per inch is just fine. It's a looser weave, but that's all that an inkjet printer can reproduce. So it would be pointless to have a larger resolution image. And we'll talk a lot more about resolution and I'll have some readings for you because that's very important. So 300 pixels per inch. And you can change that anytime again in Photoshop, you see these little teeny V-like arrows. You can click and hold on those and you will get a sub menu that gives you other options. So you're usually gonna be using inches determining, to determine your output, but you've got a choice of pixels, percentages, centimeters, millimeters, et cetera, for different types of output. Pixels would be for making something for the internet. So I'm gonna leave that at inches and here too, you have centimeters per inch, pixels per inch. I'm gonna leave this at pixels per inch. And you can always change the resolution, but if you change the resolution to more than what your original source was, it doesn't really help your image quality and it can damage it. So I'm gonna leave this at this resolution. I could scale it down to a lower resolution. 72 is what people, used to present on the social media because you're only seeing it on a screen perhaps and 72 is what most screens have for a screen resolution and that will lower the advantages it will lower your file size to do that but i don't want to do that i'm going to keep this at 300 10 by 6 and then say okay here Okay, so that shrinks the image on the screen because there's less pixels to present on the screen once I click that because I shrunk the size down. And I'm going to go up now. I can zoom in if I want to see it closer by going to the command key on your Mac Plus. Or you can just use the zoom icon on your menu. And then I'm going to file menu again back to the beginning. And instead of open, I'm going to save as, not save, because that's not gonna let me direct this to anywhere but the downloads folder. I want to go to save as so I can tell it where to go. Um, so with your Mac, you have a choice of cloud documents or save on your computer. I'm gonna go to save on my computer because I like the cloud, it's good for backing things up, but I don't trust it entirely for keeping originals on. So you, I always save a hard copy on my computer or use um, hard copy um, external drives to save work on. So you always know you have a solid backup and use the cloud to share things with people and stuff. So I'm going to save on my computer and you get another menu now for save as. The, this is an important menu that we'll come back to a lot. I don't want to go into depth with it today um, just to keep this recording not too long. 
but it comes up from my camera with the format as JPEG as being the original recorded format, which is a good compressed format that you can share with people. It keeps the file size down. Um, there's other formats because you see double arrows here. That means there's more options. So Photoshop, when we start working with, you know, creating original images, you'll save an original in Photoshop, very high quality layered version of an image and then maybe also save a JPEG image. Um, you're always choosing your format and your size based on your output intentions. So my intention for this is to share on Flickr or social media or upload to Blackboard. So JPEG is good for compressing the image for that use. And it also keeps, it makes a nice looking image when it compresses it. So JPEG, and this JPG up here, extension to the save as file name, is the same as the JPEG down here. It's the same thing. So I'm going to go rename this and delete just the number from my camera. And then just type in a name for it so I can find it more easily. Oops. <laughs> Threes. Dot JPEG. I'm leaving that extension there because I, the computer I want to know what you know the file is and some apps will want to determine what the file is with that extension so pine trees jpeg and i'm putting it into my berkshires folder because that's where it was taken this is on my desktop if you click on these double arrows you have more choices again and this shows you what folders are on your computer you can just save it out into your desktop or make a folder for it and I suggest making a folder for this class and then making folders within that folder to save your work and organize it because as you get multiple images and image sources that you're working from, it can really get chaotic on your desktop. And I'm one to talk because my desktop is a mess um, and I need to organize it and I'll do that periodically. But anyway, make a folder for this class and keep everything organized in there. So I'm clicking on the Berkshires folder that's on my desktop and then leaving the format as JPEG and I'm going to leave the color profile as the original. I could change that if I had a particular printer I was going to that had a specific color profile or way that it treats color is what that is. Um, because this is just going to share with social media, I'm going to leave my original color profile that came with the camera shot and not touch that, just leave it checked. And now I'm going to save my image. And of course, with Photoshop, you get another menu. And this is your options for saving as a JPEG image. And this is a very useful menu because you can determine the size of your output again with that. You can see that this is set at low quality image options, and it's only 508K, a half a megabyte. Um, in file size, which is really good for sharing on social media, emailing people, but it's not the best quality for printing. So I might save a version like that. And then um, actually I would go and save a higher quality. If you move this slider up, you can go to maximum 12 quality. And that's giving me a 3.9 megabyte image now, which is about six times bigger than down here on low. So if you're worried about file size on your computer or if somebody's email can't take such a big file size, you can lower this. But I always save a high quality one first. So here's baseline standard format options. I'm just going to leave this on standard. We'll go through the others later. Um, click OK. And that saved a copy onto my, into my folder Berkshires on my desktop. So now I'm going to go back up to file and save as one more time, save on my computer. And this time I'm going to change the name of this to small. I'm just going to add an SM to, as a reminder that this is a smaller version of this image. And I'm going to leave the format at JPEG again. By changing the name of the image, it's not going to save over the top of the last image I saved. It's going to save a separate image. So I'm going to save. And this time, 
I'm going to change this to four quality, low quality, so it's very small. And that's fine for posting on Facebook if I want it to load really quickly or to send to somebody or to share um, as, in a